The Honourable Member, Andrew Williams. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. Dinna Thank, Thank you very much for letting me take this call on the financial reporting bill. Uh, and isn't it interesting hearing from the previous speaker where uh, they are obviously under some illusion that uh, uh, this is all new to uh, New Zealand commerce, all new to New Zealand companies, all new to this economy, and that the National Party has suddenly come up with these bright, brilliant ideas. These are the sorts of ideas that have been talked about for many, many years by many parties in this House. Uh, and many administrations in this House, how to reduce compliance costs, how to make the economy more efficient, how to reduce the burden on particularly small uh, to medium enterprise companies who do find it very, very painful trying to meet the bureaucratic uh, uh, hoops that they have to jump through on a daily basis. And in this respect, New Zealand First has always said that we want to reduce the cost to business, we want to make this economy more efficient, and we want to help New Zealand uh, business uh, grow the economy and for the economy itself to be uh, far more competitive. And in that respect, uh, New Zealand First supports this bill because uh, while it is very much an administrative bill and it uh, tidies up something like uh, 80 other acts uh, and it tidies up the Financial Reporting Act of 1993, uh, to improve those uh, compliance and reporting standards, uh, it also is common sense. And New Zealand First has said in this House time and time again, uh, if the government puts up common sense, good policy, we will support it. Uh, if it doesn't, we will oppose it. And in this case, there is common sense, good policy throughout, uh, and we welcome it. Particularly, as I said, for smaller companies, uh, they will not have the same level of complexity of reporting uh, as larger companies. Many of our small to medium business enterprises in New Zealand are run by uh, small family operators, husband and wives, small management teams, and really uh, they do struggle at times uh, to meet uh, all the red tape. And in this respect, this will help. It will help them get on and actually do what they need to do to actually you know, sell their goods, sell their services, uh, and do business, which in turn will help employ more New Zealanders, which will in turn help grow the economy, which in turn will uh, result in more revenue coming to the government in the way of, uh, of an increasing economy uh, with more money going around, rather than them spending so much time actually filling out forms and filling out bureaucratic nonsense half the time, uh, just so that uh, bean counters uh, and bureaucrats uh, sitting back in their offices uh, can justify uh, what they're doing. In this respect, Mr Speaker, uh, we're very pleased also to see that, in, in, and I'll highlight one particular aspect, was the Retirement Villages Act. And in that respect, before the Commerce Committee, we are, uh, we are not on the Commerce Committee, but it was brought to my attention that the original legislation uh, that the government had brought before it uh, was going to p provide a, a, t a you know, huge burden on the retirement uh, villages throughout New Zealand in terms of their reporting, and the time frames that were being laid down were just going to be simply uh, impossible, uh, reducing it to three months reporting. And also, I note on page 130 of the bill, uh, the op originally it was going to be the operator of a retirement village must lodge a copy of the financial statements of the operator and each village within 20 working days after the financial statements are required to be signed. Those 20 working days now, under the bill, have changed to five months after the balance date of the operator. So isn't that interesting, uh, Mr Lotuiga, who says that what a wonderful job the government's doing, but this government put up original legislation that was going to put such an incredible burden on them to report within 20 days of their financial statements uh, being signed, uh, and now they see that uh, a five-month period is more suitable so that they can actually do uh, the, the reporting correctly uh, and not try and uh, absolutely, uh, under a pressure cooker situation, uh, try and get information uh, into the system. Uh, Mr Speaker, there's also, in respect of this uh, bill, uh, it does bring into line obligations of charities and other such entities. Uh, that's a good thing because, as we've heard from other speakers today, uh, you know, increasingly uh, with a growing need uh, for more and more charities in this country because often the government itself is not delivering, often the government itself is handing over 
the needs of our communities, the needs of New Zealanders, uh, to, the, to the charities to perform the, the functions that uh, previously central government used to provide and which now more and more New Zealanders are having to go to charities for their assistance. However, it is, uh, as a result, important that those same charities uh, do uh, be required to report uh, in a responsible manner uh, to the same level of uh, reporting uh, as is the case uh, with many other small uh, business enterprises, and that's a good thing. So, Mr Speaker, I won't, I won't go on any further, but I would just say that uh, this 169-page uh, uh, bill uh, does tie, uh, tie things together. It does bring a lot of things together. It refers to a huge number of previous acts that uh, will also uh, be brought into line uh, with this financial reporting bill. Uh, it does help uh, the New Zealand economy be more efficient. It does help with the overall cost of compliance of doing business in this country. Therefore, it can only be a good thing, and New Zealand First supports the bill. I call the